Hello everybody, I hope you're having a great day. My name is Tyler Edlin. I'm a professional concept artist and instructor. I've been doing this now for over 10 years and I've had the indie clients all the way up to the AAA ones. And today I wanna to talk about a little bit of a different topic that I wish I had known more about to manage my own expectations, to help better prepare me for going into more social settings for this field. Specifically, I'm referring to kind of being an introvert in a creative field where if you're anything like me, you'd rather just sit in your basement in isolation and grind out work, right? But occasionally there are scenarios, right? There are situations where social skills really can help us. They can really further our career. They can help get us to the next level. I'm referring to this week, as of the recording of this video, the Lightbox Expo is coming up this weekend. And it very well may be many of your uh, first event of this nature and of this sort that you can go there. I know because I'm speaking to a lot of peers, a lot of my own current students, they're all going there, right? It's a big convention. If you don't know, it's in LA. Lots of animators go there. Lots of visual development artists go there. Character designers go there. Production show. It's almost like the whole creative industry is kind of heading there. It's, it's a pretty big deal. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to go uh, this year. I have prior um, obligations, little kids, <laughs> that are preventing it. So hopefully soon. But I have been to many of these sort of conventions before in the past. I've went to a, a social uh, scenario last weekend where I was practicing these very tips I'm going to give you guys today. I had a 20-year high school reunion. Yes, yeah, so that kind of dates me a little bit, but I hope what I'm about to say will give you guys a little bit more confidence, help manage your expectations, and give you an idea of how to tackle a crowded convention setting. I feel this is a very important topic because I've made posts in the past about the three big key factors that could affect you getting hired at a particular place if you're in if you're in this field for a career, right? There's luck, something we really can't control too much about. There is the technical skill aspect of it, right? how well you can create a piece of art on a technical scale, whether that's you know really good at characters, gestures, environment design, or color theory, right? You need a certain amount of technical proficiency to do well. And then there is the social aspect of it. Usually this is more of like the marketing side of things where you just you know let the world know who you are, what your brand is, and what you're good at. But everything I'll talk about in this video kind of pertains to that last and third pillar. And it's something I wish I had spent more time on in my earlier career. You guys can tell from my earlier videos. Hi everyone, uh, so thanks for watching my uh, new show and I hope you enjoyed the new layout or the format I have for it. <laughs> Those of you that have been around here for a while, I've been doing these videos now for over 10 years about the production qualities, the everything was, it was just bad. I just, I wasn't always dressed appropriately for the information I was going to deliver. There, there's a certain amount of etiquette and professionalism to kind of take into consideration for these circumstances. And, you know, go having given that some thought, it, it will just ultimately help your career and, you know, better you as, as a creative person when it comes to these scenarios. Take what I am about to say, of course, with a, a grain of salt, but from my experience, I feel it helps and I wish I knew this stuff a lot sooner. So I would recommend before going to a convention to clearly and realistically define your goals of being there. Even if that just takes you just a few moments to journal it into your, a notepad on your phone, maybe you physically write it out on a few loose sheets, just write out what you want to do there, what would be an absolute dream of you doing, you know, of what would a dream opportunity be like for you? Are there people you want to meet? Are there companies you want to establish connections with? Are there recruiters you want to get your work in front of? Just simply outline and list those out. You know, it kind of be a, a compass for you over the weekend. It's something you can reflect back or look upon if you're ever overwhelmed and confused. I know it happens a lot at these very crowded events. But yeah, having a clear direction and motivation uh, will only serve you well. The other thing is practicing your elevator pitch. You know, like when after you've established some sort of uh, 
conversation with a person, you want to kind of just explain who you are and, and what you do in a very simple way. A version of that is kind of like what you saw at the beginning of this video when I'm like, hey, I'm Tyler Edlin. I do concept art and illustration and yada, yada, yada. You just want to be able to <laughs> express that clearly and um, articulate what you want to do and potentially what your interests are. And it, it sounds silly, I know, but just give it a practice. I've been in enough social situations where I have tongue-tied my way without the power of an editing button to kind of course correct myself. This one, again, another very kind of common sense sort of thing, but dress appropriately and comfortably, right? These are crowded conventions. There's not strict dress codes, but there's a lot of professionals there and you want to come off as a professional, even though you've never had working experience, maybe you're just an early student. I often heard it is just better to dress over than under when there's not a very specific dress code. Trust me, people will notice and you'll start getting respect before you even talk to people. You just don't want to look sloppy and you want your clothes to fit, you know, appropriately. Too, too tight, too baggy, and maybe that's your image, you know, every other day of the week. But in a professional setting, just try to clean it up a little bit. You know, get a haircut before you go. Maybe, you know, for men, you got to <laughs> trim up the beard and the, and the mustache, whatever it is. Um, it, it will help, even if it's very subtle. Of course, the most obvious thing that I'm really not going to dive into on this video is to get your business cards printed and make sure your portfolio is packed and ready. Uh, I, one question I do get a lot is... Is, should this be digital? Should it just be a website? Uh, should it be a physical portfolio? I say, why not both? If you can, bring it fully loaded in a folder on an iPad, you know, so you don't need internet access. You could just whip it out and show, you know, your work on a screen. But you'll also potentially have bigger meetings or reviews with full studios, you know, with recruiters for different studios as well. And maybe it's just another artist you want to physically get your work in front of. I would also recommend, not that there would be enough time to really do this at this stage, but again, you could do it for the next time, is print out a portfolio. Last time I went to a convention, I went to shutterfly.com, for example, non-sponsor, and I took all my works and I just made a book of it, printed out like five or six of them, and I put my business card in them, and I left them with a lot of the people I met and talked to. Again, it, it's just a nice little memento and they'll certainly remember hopefully my encounter with them a little bit better than just having met me and looking at my work in a digital only format. All right, so this one's a little bit harder in regards to prep work to go, but it's mindset prep. You know, how you get into the right state of mind before entering a, you know, a convention like this. The first thing I like to, to really tell myself, to remind myself, morning, noon, and night for these things is that no matter what happens, everything is going to be okay, right? There, Maybe you don't get the biggest job you want. Maybe you don't run into the person you need to. It's still like, you know what? Just take time to breathe. It, it's going to be all right. Of course, you want to just be kind to yourself and don't dwell on any awkward moments and missteps that do come up. Yes, of course, realistically, they, they're going to come up. They're going to come up with all of us. But it's about not getting caught in your own mental state, you know, in your own headspace with that stuff. Because remember, even though we can get f frustrated and we can feel overwhelmed, a lot of people won't see that physically on you unless you really start <laughs> emoting that about. But we all deal with it at the end of the day, myself included, at my high school reunion this weekend, I was like all in my own head about, oh, is this going to be good? Uh, how do I talk to people? All the basic stuff. Um, but I had to remind myself, you know, just you know, to talk to these people. It's going to be all right. They're all feeling it. And, you know, I was talking with them. And they did feel it. Like, you know, they everyone had the same little bit of social anxiety going back and meeting with these old cliques of people. So don't get caught up <laughs> in your own mind where you're getting in your way and then you start making really bad mannerisms with your body or, or you know, you just stay in your room all afternoon at the convention uh, just because you're getting anxiety about it. Try to shut that voice down before it takes over and realize we all, in fact, do have it. Now, another little thing on mindset prep is to not be burnt out or feel bad or, or really harp on yourself if you get rejected. 
a great way I do battle this feeling because the re rejection comes right in all shapes and sizes. It's not a matter of like, oh, I want to make a date with a person or I want to set up a meeting with somebody else. Right. Yeah, rejections happen all the time, realistically. But what I try to do is be kinder to myself, be forgiving to myself to not essentially reject myself. Because if I don't reject myself, if I never count, you know, anything I do as something final and like that, it's a, then it's going to be all right. You know, just not rejecting yourself. And then it almost takes the power away from anyone else being able to reject you because you will always have yourself. You can always bounce back again. You can always take another step forward or step sideways. All right, Ed, at the start of a convention, right? Here's part two. Um, try to start as many conversations as you can. Don't necessarily hang out, be, a, you know, as a wallflower, hoping that everyone, uh, you know, is going to go approach you. No, I would try to start as many conversations as you comfortably can. Make those opportunities happen for yourself. Don't necessarily just wait for them to happen because they may or may not. You can have a little bit more control if you take initiative. So like I said, if, if you get social anxiety, much like myself, you don't know how to start a conversation with somebody you hold high up on a totem pole, you know, like an, on the career track or just someone that you've uh, admired for years for whatever reason, just simply walk up to a person and say, hi, I don't think I've met you yet. My name is Tyler. And then bam. And you could just start any kind of conversation from that point. Usually they'll smile, which is another tip. You know, smile, of course, the, the best and, and most frequently that you can, as naturally as you can. You don't want to walk around like this, right? That's, that's just not great. But, you know, smile. You want to convey with you know, your body language that you're approachable, right? Just kind of sitting in the corner with your, with your crossed arms. Like, again, a very closed sort of language is not ideal for these situations. Again, I do it all the time at home, but that doesn't make it something I want to do um, when I'm in a public uh, scenario like that. And of course, you don't want to approach every conversation that you, you may have with a specific objective or goal because that, that's just going to complicate things in your own headspace. Simply just realize that, you know, I'm going to go in talking to anybody and I want to have a sense of fun. You know, I think just listening more, right, the 80-20 rule, ask as many questions without being as annoying, <laughs> without being annoying, and just listen. People actually do like talking about themselves, so when you ask them questions, usually they're not too um, hesitant to kind of you know, get into answers. One thing I've had to work on in these scenarios and even with these videos is just simply talking slower, not doing the great of that of this video. But again, this is like an unscripted uh, spur of the moment sort of thing that came to my mind this week. But yeah, you want to practice articulating your speech. Talking slower is better than talking faster. Maintaining some eye contact, you know, as naturally as possible again, without being awkward about it. And of course, when you're when you're standing or even possibly when you're sitting, try to avoid slouching, right? You want to perceive as you want to be perceived as as confident. I think a lot of us want to be perceived as confident as we can. Slouching is no way uh, to look that. And then, you know, after a convention, simply take notes, you know, jot down maybe who you met, maybe get, you know, gather your um business cards that you've collected and do some follow-up emails. If, if not follow-up emails, maybe you can connect on a great professional site like LinkedIn or, or so, or even on any other social platform. You can send a DM and say, hey, it was nice talking to you this weekend. Hopefully we can, we can do that again sometime. Uh, follow-ups are great, a great way to maintain contact and build these connections. And lastly, just take time to self-reflect, whether that's every night, uh, whether that's just on the plane or car ride home. Uh, just think about how it went, what you could do better next time you go to one of these, and um, you know what did I do right? And if you're anything like me, getting you know social anxiety is, is never super at these things. So a little bit of practice, a little bit of mindset prep, bring some decent clothes, you know, cut your hair, whatever you need to do to feel a little more confident, at least outwardly, even though you could be <laughs> inside really a mess. All of us just try to look and, and feel our best at these situations and that you are not alone. So I won't be seeing you guys there this year, but I do hope any of these tips 
potentially help and I will certainly catch you there in a year or two when I am able to go. Best of luck to everybody, of course, that is attending this weekend. So guys, if you are attending this weekend, let us know down below if you're going and what potentially your goals are. All right, and I'll talk to you guys soon.